Okay, today I want to start out with a, a shout out to Michael at Overland Bound. Um, he did a really good video today about weight ratings, um, kind of prepping your truck for weight ratings, and um, it, it's maybe one of the best descriptions I've seen online. So I'll leave the link in the description below. So we're going to talk about axle ratings and tire ratings and wheel ratings and how they all come together to give you a gross vehicle weight recommendation and um, and, and what those percentages are and how those numbers work, uh, particularly how they uh, work on a Ford F-150. Now these government certified stickers have your, your gross vehicle weight recommendation along with your two uh, gross axle weight ratings as the vehicle was delivered from the factory. And and I've got two of these here. So you can see this one here, the front axle is rated for 3,300 pounds and the back one at 3,800 pounds. Now on the next one, you'll see that the front axle is rated for 3,150 pounds and the back axle is still rated for 3,800 pounds. Now the weird part about this is both of these trucks actually have a front axle assembly that's rated for 3,800 pounds and the back axle assembly is rated for 5,300 pounds. Now you get these numbers and, and it really doesn't have a whole lot to do um, you know, with the axle assembly. Uh, it has more to do with tires and wheels. So when you get an F-150, they have a number of different wheel assemblies that they sell. So these 17 inch wheels, uh, they're rated for uh, 1,900 pounds. Well, actually 1,800 pounds. Uh, but wheels are rated differently. So wheels are rated for the rating of the wheel, not including the weight of the wheel and the weight of the tire. So you get 1,800 pounds becomes 1,900 with the weight of the wheel and tire times two is 3,800 pounds. So note this payload sticker is not a government certified sticker, but it does give you the payload based on curb weight. So curb weight, unlike dry weight, includes a full tank of fuel, engine oil, transmission fluid, both rear differential fluids, battery acid, and windshield washer fluid. And that's the difference. That's why you see the difference between magazine numbers and the one in the door. So GVWR is rated based on 91.25% of the addition of the two axle ratings minus the weight of the truck. Now, these wheels that we're looking at here, these are the Ford Heavy Duty Payload Package wheels, and, and they're rated for uh, 2,300 pounds, with the weight of the wheel and tire becomes 24, which means 4,800 pounds per axle. And that's where the, the payload package rating comes from on its axle. Now, so here, this is actually, uh, this is actually my truck. So, so that's the rating that the Snowplow Package truck comes with, uh, the front axle is only rated to 3,150 pounds, uh, which should be 3,800 pounds, but because of the tires, it's rated to 3,150 pounds, which ironically, when the truck's full of fuel, it only has you 100 extra pounds to, to carry the weight of the plow. So when you look at these little trucks, uh, you're also looking at little tires. Now, these tires come rated for about 2,650 pounds, and that's, uh, you know, 2650 times 2 times 0. 0.6, that's 3180, which they rate at 3150 for that front axle. So that's where these axle ratings actually come from. You, you, uh, you have an axle assembly rated at 3800 pounds and a wheel rated at 3800 pounds, but it's the tire that brings that weight rating down. Now, when you upgrade your tires, in that case, you can actually upgrade... Uh, the axle assemblies or up to the axle assemblies rating. So, you know, the axle assembly is lug nut to lug nut, but it's also everything that's bolted onto it. So it becomes its weakest point. That's what the, what you're going to get on your sticker. So in this case, you can, you know, you can buy one of these trucks, and just upgrade the, the tires and you'll upgrade both axle rating. Now, when it comes to these front end assemblies, you know, these axle assemblies, Ford does something neat that no other four-wheel drive manufacturer does. They flip that around, they put that in the back axle of a Mustang, and that same assembly gets torture tested by millions and millions of miles of Mustangs everywhere around the world, where people are drifting and doing whatever with their Mustang. That's how strong these front axles are. They're in 700 horsepower, 900 horsepower, supercharged, drag cars, whatever. They're, that's, that's that assembly. 
So when you pull that assembly out, this is kind of what it looks like. So, um, you know, this, it's just an aluminum assembly, which is nice because it's nice and light, but it, uh, it gives you that strength that you need. Now the weight strength is all in the suspension and the, in the CV joints and the U joints and the bearings and all that stuff. Um, and, and, but this axle assembly gives you all kinds of strength. Now the, the other part of it is you can see these two here, this is the, um, uh, the old carrier, the regular carrier on the right and the, and the torsion differential on the left with the, with the uh, ring gear being switched over. So you can do this because Ford, again, you know, they use this assembly in the Raptor, but they also use a similar assembly in the Mustang. So, so this gives you the ability to, to change up to uh, a locking, an automatic locking differential, or they call LSD, uh, which I think is bad terminology. Anyway, when you uh, when you have a look here, you get the back axle. Uh, this is a 9.75. Now, I want to point out this is in PEI Canada, so that uh, red on the tire is not rust on rubber. That's dirt. And uh, and that wetness on the differential, that's undercoating. That's not a leaky differential. Um, but the, this is the 9.75 axle, and that's the axle that's rated for 5,300 pounds. Now that comes in things like the limited, which doesn't have that rating, and that's because of the tires. So, and now this, so this is the uh, that assembly from the side with an airbag hooked up to it. So, if you have an F one hundred and fifty and you're, you know, you're you're operating your tires and you're going to operate your load, you're going to actually have to do something. Now, you, you have some choices there. You can buy the heavy duty uh, three leaf spring. Um, you know, to, to upgrade that for that weight and change the shocks, or you can add air. And again, you should probably change the shocks. So here's the difference, you know, when you're talking difference between a quarter ton and a half ton is a lot of these half tons actually have the axle capacity to, uh, to rate up to uh, where the quarter ton is, uh, is maxed out on axle and wheel and tire. So, so these trucks, like uh, a Limited is a good example of something you can change a lot. Uh, a Raptor can be changed some, and these shorty trucks are anything with the factory uh, base 17-inch wheels. Now, now this here, this is the 8.8-inch uh, axle. And some of the benefits are it's lighter, it's more fuel efficient, and it gives you a little more ground clearance. It's very strong, plenty strong enough to run 35s. Um, but the, you know, the weight rating of 3,800 pounds, uh, most of the trucks max out at the 3,800 pounds. So you can change tires. It'll, it might change your front axle rating, but it's not going to change your back axle rating because 3,800 is as high as it goes. So in review, you need to know, uh, first the, the axle rating, uh, what that max rating is for the assembly. That's lug nut to lug nut. You, then you need to know your bolting wheels onto it. You need to know what those ratings are. And then on top of those wheels, you're going to put tires. And you need to know what those ratings are and, uh, and how they're affected, whether it's a, a steering axle or a load axle. So remember, GVWR is a recommendation. But once you know your true axle ratings, never exceed them, front or rear. If you found this helpful, please like and subscribe.